Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, a JetBot, which is a vision-controlled robot from NVIDIA, based upon their Jetson Nano single board computer. You can probably see it on top of the robot there. Now, a JetBot isn't a product you can buy. Rather, it's a robot specification that NVIDIA have come up with and made freely available. And you have to use a Jetson Nano, but you also need various 3D printed parts. You can download the designs from the NVIDIA website, and you also need various motors and controllers and wheels and a camera and things like that to make it work. So the idea is you build your JetBot, and then you use it to experiment with machine learning. Now, NVIDIA have very kindly pre-built a JetBot for us. Here it is, they sent this to me all put together so we can test it out, see what it can do, so let's go and take a closer look. So let's take a closer look at the JetBot. And uh, on the top, we have the, uh, the Jetson Nano, which as you might remember from some of my previous videos, is actually a two-part construction. It's a SOM system on a module, which plugs into this carrier board. And if I just take off the SOM for a second, you will see that uh, underneath here, there we are, we have a, a Wi-Fi module, which obviously gives a wireless connectivity to the board. So uh, I'll just put the SOM back in. There we are, hopefully that's all uh, properly back together. And I would point out you don't have to have that M.2 Wi-Fi module fitted under here. You can use a USB Wi-Fi dongle plugged into one of the uh, USB ports. And as this all suggests, we're going to access this robot and actually communicate with this robot wirelessly over Wi-Fi. And because of that at the back, we have this Pi OLED display. And the purpose of this is to show the JetBot's local IP address so we know how to access it using a web browser. At the other end of the Jetson Nano, we find a camera. And uh, this can be a Raspberry Pi camera with a wide angle attachment or a Leopard camera. And this is the, the Leopard model, and I must remember to take the lens cap off. In the middle of the JetBot, there's a 10,000 mAh USB power bank offering two 5 volt 3 amp outputs, which are used to power the Jetson Nano and the JetBot motors. And talking of motors, if we turn the robot over, you'll see that under here, we've got a two motors, each driving one wheel. We've got a 60 millimeter wheels here, and these are a TT motors from Adafruit. And there's also an Adafruit motor control board, which they're connected to. And there's also this a caster wheel in this 3D printed mount to keep the robot stable. And of course, in addition to what I've mentioned, we've got the 3D printed parts of the robot, lots of wires, various mounting hardware, nuts and bolts, things like that. So there we are. This is NVIDIA's JetBot vision controlled robot platform. And if you're wondering, the cost for everything here is about $100 for the Jetson Nano computer itself, and up to about $150 for the camera, motors, motor driver, OLED display, and other JetBot components. JetBot is a sophisticated machine learning robot platform. But fortunately, getting it up and running is not that difficult because NVIDIA have documented everything very well in the JetBot wiki, which is available here on GitHub. And the first thing to do once the JetBot has been assembled, you've got all the hardware in one piece, is to download an SD card image of what is actually called JetBot. It's effectively a dedicated version of the Jetpack software available for the Jetson Nano. And this needs to be downloaded and written to a micro SD card at least 32 gigabytes in size. And then for the first boot, the JetBot needs to be connected up to a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard and a power supply to boot to its desktop for various setup activities. So for example, you need to give it your Wi-Fi details to get online. I've done that. I'm obviously online here because we're on the, on the web. And then it's also worth doing some software updating, which is all documented uh, down here in the, in the wiki, all nice, nice and clear. And you also need to make sure you're in the right power mode, which I'll just show you that. Let's just launch a, a terminal. And it's worth pointing out there are two different power modes for the Jetson Nano. We need to be in the lower power mode because we're powering the JetBot from a USB power bank, which can only supply a maximum of 2.5 amps on each of its ports. And potentially the Jetson Nano can draw more than that, and that wouldn't be a good thing using the power bank. 
So what we need to do is to make sure our Jetson Nano is in 5 watt mode rather than 10 watt mode. And to do that, we simply enter sudo and uh, nvp model, and it's going to be minus m1 apparently like that. And that will do its thing. We need to put in our password, which is jetbot, username and password or jetbot on this uh, distro. And we can check that that's worked by typing a sudo and uh, nvp model and uh, minus q and we should be in 5 watt mode yes there we are we're in 5 watt mode so all the setup has now been done so we can try out the jetbot autonomously so we'll close things down and try the robot out right with everything set up i've now got the jetbot safely on the floor because it's going to be moving around i don't want it falling off the table and I'm going to turn it on by connecting the power to the Jetson Nano to the power bank like that and then we'll have to wait a minute for it to boot up and uh, there we are it's booted we can tell because we've got some text on the little OLED display at the back so I'm now going to connect in the power to its motor and motor controllers also to the, the power bank like that and if we cut to a close-up shot of the OLED, we can see the JetBot's local IP address, which is 192.168.16. So if we go to a web browser and enter that with a colon 8888 on the end and press enter like that, hopefully we'll enter something called Jupyter Lab, which is an interactive development environment for working with code and data and what they call notebooks. And it looks like it's going to work. Hopefully, is it going to load? Please load. Yes. There it is. And we've got loaded up here the first notebook provided by NVIDIA to teach us all about the JetBot, which is called Basic Motion, as you can see. So we'll just go through a little bit of this to give you the basic principle. And what basically we do inside Jupyter Lab is we can highlight code. So if I select that uh, box with code and press Control A, and then I press uh, Control Enter, we can execute that code. This is Python code, and that's going to run, and then hopefully it'll finish. We can see down the bottom here when it's busy, and now it's idle. So we'll now also just uh, run that. I'm not going to take you through every piece of code. we we'll would be here all day, but that will run as well. And then now, hopefully, if we do this, we can uh, move the robot. And there we are. The robot is now spinning around because we've turned on its left motor. That's, uh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And we can turn it off with that command there, stop, which is like that. And if we bring in, for example, the time module, there we are, control A and enter. I quite like this system, it's rather good. And we could therefore execute this piece of code here. And there we are, it'll obviously move for a short period of time. And if I press, keep pressing control and enter, we can keep spinning the robot round. There it is. Let's bring it back to something where you can probably see it better on the screen. There we are. So we proved we've got access to the jetpot and we can execute code on it. And the other thing we can do here, in case you're wondering, is to shut it down in a controlled way. We can open up a new tab there and go down to here and select a terminal. And in the terminal, we could do a sudo and a shutdown and a now. And enter the uh, password, which is what jetbot, enter that, and that the jetbot would shut down. So we've got all the basic principles here of accessing and remotely controlling the jetbot. Right, we're now going to run another demo where the robot's going to control itself using vision recognition. Or more specifically, what it's going to try and do is avoid collisions by taking the feed from its camera, constantly analyzing what it can see in that feed, and working out whether its path ahead is either unblocked, in which case it can move forward, or blocked, in which case it's going to turn. So to do this, there's quite a lot of code to execute, so I'll execute all of this code. And you can now see we've got a, a image from the robot. We can see what the robot can see and whether it thinks things are blocked or unblocked. So we'll just continue with the rest of the code. And uh, there we are. The robot's now navigating around and hopefully avoiding obstacles. It's moving forward. If it senses a problem, it's moving. That seems to be working, doesn't it? This is quite impressive. Remember, this is a pre-trained neural network. Will it go into the bed? No, it's coming around again. Oh, that's very impressive. It's like a little type of insect moving around the floor. It goes up to that computer, moves back. Does it like that edge? No, 
it comes back again. Oh, got caught in a loop there. Is it going to go any further? Going round. Oh, this is interesting. It's catching itself a bit, isn't it? Maybe I should move it to a more open area. Let's move it back over there. There we are, it can do a longer run now. I'll bring up on the screen what it's seeing. So you can see that, uh, you can see here, let's go down to that. I forgot to do it, so I was so interested in the robot. Where's what it's seeing? There's what it's seeing. You can see whether it's uh, blocked or unblocked. Let's put that on the screen. So you can see when it thinks it's blocked, it will turn. When it isn't blocked like now, it won't turn. Put my foot in, oh, it'll turn. There we are. And uh, I'm impressed with this. Now clearly this could be trained to actually be more accurate in this particular area, but it does actually work. It actually is moving around, detecting what it can see. And remember, this is quite sophisticated. This isn't doing what we'd have happening if we had, say, a robot sensing a line on the floor, or a robot maybe sensing by ultrasonics where something in front of it at a certain distance. This is actually processing an image, working out what it thinks it's seeing, and from that working out whether it's blocked or unblocked, and moving around. I think this is really fascinating. It is it shows us where we're heading with machine learning. We can do this on a relatively simple system and it's moving around by itself. I've got a let's take this little box from here. Of course I can make it there we are make it turn and make it turn again, make it turn again. It is detecting things and moving around. So I could play with this for hours and hours and hours. I don't think I will just now, but we've certainly seen the principle of using the Jetbot to actually control itself using vision recognition. Right, for my next trick, I want to get the Jetbot moving around on the surface of this nice wooden table without falling off. So once again, it needs to be able to work out using its camera on the front and its neural net which areas are blocked, which should be the edges of the table, which areas are free so it can move around. And you'd think this would be very similar to what we were doing in the last demo, but if I run the same neural network in this context, this is what happens. The Jetbot just rotates around and around and around and around, presumably because it thinks it's blocked in all directions, which it isn't, but that's what the neural net is perceiving. So we need to train a new neural net to work on the surface of this table. Maybe because this is a more visually complicated surface, maybe because the lighting's changed, something like that. So, how does training work? Well, basically, we need to feed the neural network with lots of uh, sample training data. In this case, lots of images from the robot's camera, and we need to categorise those so the neural network can learn from them. So, to do that, I'll just move out of the way, and uh, we'll point the robot, to say, in that direction. That's a position where clearly the air in front of it is clear. So if I move to Jupyter Lab, I'm running a notebook here from NVIDIA called Data Collection. And this shows us what the robot can see, and it allows us to tag that image as either free or blocked. And what this basically does is that over here in this folder called Dataset, it will actually put those images, store them as JPEGs, in these two folders called free and blocked. So here I'll click uh, Add Free, because that's clearly free. But then if I move the robot forward to, say, the edge of the table there, that I think should be probably there, should be blocked. So I'll do an add blocked. And similarly, if I turned it a little bit like that, that should also be blocked. I'll do add blocked again. So basically, I need to take lots and lots of pictures, scores of pictures, maybe even a few hundred pictures. So I'll get on with gathering this training data and I'll come back to you when I've finished. So here I am back again. And as you can see, it's working. The robot has learned how to move around across the whole surface of this table without falling off. I'm rather nervous. I'm staying out of shot as much as I can so I don't get into the robot's visual field and disturb its perception of the edges. I'm talking about it as if it's a, a thing, aren't I? In a sort of it is. Uh, I took, in the end, about 190 pictures of blocks and unblocked situations, and I used those to train a new neural networking model to, to let the robot move around like this on the table. It's a rather involved process, all documented in the relevant NVIDIA notebook, but it's basically what I talked about in my Jetson Nano vision recognition video, 
where neural networks are shown lots of sample data, lots of training data, and from that training data they establish connections so they can deal with perceiving the world here visually in the future. I thought it was going to fall off then, but it didn't. I'm still rather nervous about this. It works. This is the first neural network I've ever trained, and the result is, uh, I think, pretty good. You can also train the neural networks used on, on the Jetson uh, Nano, the Jetbot here, to do all kinds of other things. You can train it to uh, follow edges, uh, say on a road, to follow a road. You can train it to follow people, all kinds of things like that. This is really just the beginning, but hopefully this demonstration is a good example of what can be done with uh, machine learning, with vision recognition and robotics. I'm certainly very pleased with the results of this test and I hope that uh, you've learned something from it as well. NVIDIA's JetBot is a great vision-controlled robot platform to experiment with, and it's been fantastic to check it out to see what it can do in this video. But now that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.